against Gomez's team. So uh, kind of interesting to see the Salamence Maw Wild combination. I know that's something that was uh, very popular earlier on with the dual primal composition. And then Whimsicott here is the real game changer because it's a Pokemon that adds so much uh, kind of a new variable factor because there are all these moves that it gets access to. And it's really scary. You don't know which moves it's going to really use. Right. Uh, you know, one thing about Jump Pluff, you know, it was really popular back in the day, back in 2006 for Journey Across America. It was really popular back in 2010 because, yep. you know, Groudon was so popular with it. But then, you know, after it goes into Generation 5, Generation 6 with Black and White or X and Y, you know, Prankster came into came into play and Whimsicott has Prankster, can try to shut down Jump Pluff even in the sun. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we, one thing that we have to watch out for is whether Whimsicott has Taunt or not. A Jump Bluff is a Pokemon that's able to take advantage of the sun that Groudon sets up for it and get its speed increased. But we're going to get into this one. And just like, you know, most of the year, it's going to be a weather war. You know, Kyogre and Groudon, they're very popular Pokemon. And Kyogre really enjoys having the rain up. And I think Evan's going to want to try to keep the rain up as much as possible to prevent the Jump Bluff being able to work in the sun. Yeah, definitely. And we actually do see the leads come out here. Uh, the Kangaskhan and the Evoltal against the Cresselia and the Mawile. And I think this is actually, uh, the Mawile loves this position. And one of the reasons why Mawile is really good on this team composition is in particular for the Evoltal matchup. Uh, you know, if you use Kangaskhan, you have fake out pressure, but then you have to deal with opposing Kangaskhans. But here, Mawile gets the Intimidate, which helps out immensely against both of these Pokemon. Evoltal is a Pokemon that typically could be run physically with Knockoff, which is the set of Rashomati one with. I mean, it could also be special, but uh, that's a big deal because now knockoff is probably not a knockout onto Cresselia. Uh, of course, uh, Nicholas here does still have some pressure with the fake out and the attacks here because he's got the faster Pokemon, so uh, Evan here might want to consider a switch or two. A huge Mawile Intimidate right there. Mawile does do a good job. Evil Tall will be able to threaten that Cresselia, of course. Yeah, immensely. We do see Evil Tall switch out right now. Not going to try to boost any dark type attacks. Mawile does carry Sucker Punch pretty often, so a good call right there, possibly going to leave that Cresselia alone. As Groudon's going to go ahead and switch in, going to revert back to his primal form here, going to bring out the Desolate Land, uh, going to be able to threaten that model really well, and also the fact that it's not intimidated is pretty huge too, although Groudon's can be special as well. Not sure exactly how this Groudon's going to be built just yet. Yep. And we do see the harsh sunlight come out, and oh, Evan right now, scared of that evil tall, going to go ahead and switch out right there, not going to want to stay in and get knocked off or anything <laughs> like that. Groudon's going to come in instead, so we got two Groudon's out on the field. Groudon is such a very popular primal Pokemon as this primal Pokemon also reverts back. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're seeing a revolving door Pokemon right <laughs> from the start here. The real question is, what did Kangaskhan and Mawile do? Uh, if Kangaskhan opts to target the Cresselia slot, Mawile could get a potential play rough or an Iron Head. But Kangaskhan doesn't have much offensive pressure right now being intimidated, uh, unless it has a Fire Punch here. But I suspect we'll see a Fake Out or maybe a Power Up Punch. We do see Kangaskhan Mega Evolve here, not going to want to stay in its normal form, as we see Mawile uh, Mega Evolve too. So we've had four Pokemon revert or Mega and that's a lot of power on the field right now with that huge power that Mawile has. Kangaskhan now gonna go for the fake out here. Gonna go ahead and target down the ground on here. Gonna be a not an efficient fake out at all. Gonna get a little bit of chip damage, even through that Intimidate. I don't know. Mawile goes for the play rough here. Gonna target down that Evil Tall slot. Good switch right there from Nicholas to protect his Evil Tall and you know take that uh, play rough really well. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a really, really, the, the route on switches on both players' ends were good. But if you're Nicholas, you know, you're probably a little bit happier since uh, Mawile against Kangaskhan and Evil Tall is definitely not an ideal matchup. Of course, now with Groudons, one of the biggest things in this format is which Groudon is faster and what set are they carrying. Uh, typically, Precipice Blades is an attack that's very common, but of course it's prone to miss with the accuracy. Uh, however, Mawile right now is really shut down by that Groudon. A Groudon's probably one of the best Pokemon to counter Mawile with, given its sort of, uh, you know, uh, fire Iron Head, and, yep. Fire Fang, all those <laughs> things, right? <laughs> Play rough. Right, right. Mawile can't really do very much against the Groudon on here, so Mawile is most likely going to want to switch out. Uh, but then Groudon is threatened because you could double up on it. We do see the Mawile switch out. Mawile now going to switch out here. We do see uh, Nicholas's Groudon has a very low hit point stat. That might mean that it's a bit faster than other Groudons. Yep. As we do see Kangaskhan now go for the double edge, going to connect onto the Groudon, going to bring it down to about 30% with a critical hit on the last Ooh. hit right there. Going to deal some recoil back to itself, and that's going to put Groudon in. Oh. oh. Oh boy. Evans, Groudon goes first, connects on the Precipice Blades, Gonna be able to pick up the KO on the Groudon. Uh, I'm not sure, it does not pick up the KO on the Kangaskhan, but huge, huge knockout right there to be able to, you know, knock out Nicholas's Groudon. Yeah, I mean, that critical hit looked a little bit scary, but we did see that Evan's Groudon moved first, and that's a very big deal here, uh, because by eliminating the Groudon, now his Mawile is in a very prime position to deal with both Kangaskhan and Evoltal, and you still have to consider the fact that the Kangaskhan is at minus one attack. Uh, so, 
you know, Groudon is obviously threatened right now. Uh, the nice thing is that you could potentially pick up a double knockout here with a double edge onto Groudon and a knockoff onto Cresselia, but there's no way Evan's going to really allow that. You'd imagine that Evan's going to want to protect or switch out. We do see the low kick right now from the King's Con connect onto the Groudon. He's going to be able to pick up the KO here. Groudon does get knocked out. Uh, big knockout as well, but a turn too late right there. The sunlight's gonna fade as we see Evil Tall now gonna go ahead and make its move. Gonna go for the knockoff here. Gonna connect on Cresselia. Gonna do a lot of damage. Boosted by that Dark Aura. Does oh. not pick up the one-hit KO. As we do see the Mental Orb revealed. We do see the Life Orb revealed on the Evil Tall. And Cresselia now gonna go ahead and set up a Trick Room. Yeah, I was at first a little bit surprised to see Cresselia stay in. I thought Evan was just giving up both of his Pokemon, maybe trying to get some free switch-ins. But that Cresselia obviously trained to survive those knockoffs. And so, I'm, you know, that is possible if you have a lot of investment in the HP and the defenses there. So that's a fantastic, fantastic move there, and uh, Cresselia getting up Trick Room here is also a big deal. Uh, Kangaskhan and Evil Tar typically a little bit faster than this Kyogre that's coming in, and uh, Cresselia, you know, obviously a phenomenal support Pokemon, not to mention the fact that Mawile is still behind, so uh, Mawile can, of course, close up the game, and now Groudon can't just switch in and uh, revert the weather, since uh, we did see the Groudon being knocked out already on Nicholas's end. We do have one, there is one thing that Nicholas is probably happy about, and that's that Mawile already Mega Evolved, yeah. so we can't come in and go ahead and intimidate again. Uh, we do see Kyogre switch in, I'm not sure exactly how I feel about that. I think Mawa would have also been a pretty good switching right here too to be able to hit that Evil Tall. Yeah, that's a good point. And the scary thing here is Evil Tall and Kangaskhan could actually dual sucker punch the Kyogre. Now Kyogres on Trick Room teams typically are built a little bit bulkier so they can survive the physical attacks such as Groudon's Precipice Blades. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Kyogre hang on, but if you're using Water Spot as your main offensive attack, you know, you might have to be careful because you're gonna take a lot of damage. But we're gonna see a switch out here. And we see Jump Love come in here, not exactly the weather you wanted it to be in, and also not not exactly uh, the the dimensions of the room aren't exactly the way you want it either. As we do see <laughs> Evil Tall protect itself here, not gonna want to take any damage. As Cresselia is gonna go ahead and give Kyogre a little boost here on this water spout here in the rain. Gonna connect onto that jump club. Not very effective, but it is not even enough to pick up the knockout or even activate the focus dash if it is carrying focus dash. Yeah, but this is tricky, right? Jump Wolf can't do anything right now. It's a Pokemon that really takes advantage of the weather when you know. It basically wants to outspeed everything in Encore, but Jump Up is pretty much useless right now other than maybe going for a redirection attack like Rage Powder. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised. I thought Nicholas's play there was the double Sucker Punch into the Kyogre because sure, you might be intimidated, but hope your Water Spout, hope that uh, the Evil Tall hangs on, and you could potentially Sucker Punch, but he's got no answer from Mawile regardless. Right, we do see Kyogre protect itself now, not going to take any damage. Evil Tall goes for the Sucker Punch, not going to connect on the Kyogre at all. As Cresselia goes for an Icy Win here, going to pick up the Knockout on the Jump Club, uh, going to slow down Evil Tall a little bit, but the Trick Room's still up. Trick yeah. Room is still up, yeah. But I think Evan has played this really well, knowing that he's got the Mawai on the back. He successfully identified the fact that Groudon's the biggest threat, eliminated that immediately, and now Mawai, you know, already has a great position against Evil Tall and Kangaskhan, but Nicholas still has to deal with the Kyogre as well, so uh, it's uh, looking really scary. But we do get some good information because we did see that Cresselia has two means of speed control with Icy Wind and Trick Room. I think the key play right there was that Jump Club did not get knocked out. I actually think it is, because I, mean, it I think he was hoping for the jump off to get knocked out. Right. So that he could get the Kyogre, or the Kangaskhan back in without the Intimidate. Uh, we see Kyogre now gonna switch, gonna go ahead and switch back into the Maul right here. No Intimidate, because it's already activated its Mega Form, as Kangaskhan now gonna connect with the Fake Out. Gonna target down the Maul, not very effective. Gonna do a little bit of chip damage with two hits right there. Uh, maybe about 10%, maybe? As we do see Cresselia use the Skill Swap. What's it gonna <laughs> take? It's gonna take the Parental Bond. So now we got the Parental Bond Cresselia out on the other side. Kangaskhan gonna be, uh, gonna be levitating. Yeah, but that doesn't really matter since there are no ground type attacks for it to really avoid. And we do see the foul play here, gonna connect onto the Maul while not bring, gonna bring it down about 50%. Not too much that really can be done here. Uh, Sucker Punch is probably out of range. Yeah, that was a really good play I thought on Nicholas End. It really the one play he could make to maybe get back into this one. Because Maul did take a lot of damage. Uh, Maul is not exactly the bulkiest of Pokemon and uh, often takes a lot of damage when it switches into attacks. And so he was able to capitalize that uh, from that. But Kangaskhan, of course, now doesn't have parental bond, so Sucker Punch is at minus one from the original Intimidate. And it really won't be doing too much, but you gotta, you know, if a double Sucker Punch can knock out Mawile here, maybe we can see something, but uh, of course the firepower of Kangaskhan is reduced because of Parental Bond being uh, removed, and then we've got Kyogre in the back, and Evil Tall's speed is decreased. Right, now the helping hand onto the Mawile. Uh, Evil Tall gonna go for a Sucker Punch here. Is it gonna be enough to pick up the KO? Not enough to pick up the KO there. Uh, Life Orb does help a little bit as Kangaskhan goes for another Sucker Punch. Is Whoa, it gonna be enough to pick up the KO? gonna be close. Is it gonna be enough to oh, pick up the KO? Oh, oh, oh. Mawile gets knocked out with a critical, critical hit. hit! With the critical hit, essentially the Parental Bond was never gone, because of that critical hit right there. <laughs> oh, huge. As the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal. I'm not sure 
how much this matters, though, because now the Kyogre will be able to come out, and the Evil Tall is at minus one speed, Kyogre's at full health, and Kangaskhan does not have its ability anymore, but that was the only play Nicholas could have had. Uh, not sure how much that crit mattered because it was intimidated, but of course, you know... It wasn't intimidated. The Kangaskhan? No, it, remember, it switched out. Oh, that's, that's correct, mm -hmm. yes. So it wasn't intimidated, so yeah, I'm probably expected to that knockout, but I think if you're Evan here, uh, you know that Kyogre's still sitting at full health, and you know you got the earlier Icy Wing. That's Kangaskhan goes for a Sucker Punch on the Cresselia here, gonna pick up the knockout. Uh, is Evil Tall probably just gonna get outsped by this Kyogre here. Uh, Ky well, oh, Evil Tall goes for the Sucker Punch here. Right. Does hit on the Kyogre. Does oh! a good amount of damage. Oh, critical hit! Just one hit point remains, that magic pixel right there. Kyogre goes for a waterfowl, no damage is going to be done because it's a HP-based move. And Nicholas LeCramp right here is going to seal the deal on this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely a little bit uh, unfortunate there. I was really surprised to see a Cresselia go for an attack there, maybe trying to icy win. I thought Evan had mocked this one up, but he played perfect. Nicholas played perfectly and went for the sucker punches. I apologize if we were a bit loud there, but that was really hype. Uh, I honestly thought that Evan had the game locked up because it is rare to see someone lose when they have a Mawile against a Kangaskhan and an Evil Tall and a Jump Bluff. Like, I think the issue that Evan had is that he should have switched into his Mawile like safely, right? You want Cresselia to maybe get knocked out, protect her Kyogre, get Mawile in safely. Uh, but instead, because of how threatening Sucker Punch is, you get the life orb boost on Evil Tully and you have Kangaskhan next to it, and that's an easy like 50 plus percent damage. And even with Trick Room up, you know, you can get that damage off before. So uh, we kind of saw, I thought, uh, Nicholas steal one from there. I'm, like, I'm not sure even how much that like, critical hit matters there because uh, you right, probably knocked out. Right, the water spell right. just done a little bit less damage. And then the right. Sucker Punch just knocks it out, so I don't think he even needed that crit. Um, maybe a helping hand water spell play would have been uh, the play on Evan's end there, but really, really good play from Nicholas, and we can see why this Sucker Punch uh, is you know such a big threat. So Dark Aura just coming into play so well because of that uh, little boost that it gives to all dark type attacks. You know what? I think Evan really wished that he had a Zygarde out there for the aura break. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think Zygarde can do much more than that, but that was really well played by Nicholas. I mean, credits to Evan, too. I thought Evan played the beginning. Both played exceptionally well. Like, that game was just back and forth, back and forth. Right. And it's just, Nicholas came out barely, right? Barely came out on that one. Uh, you know, great plays right there from Evan. The skill swap was huge. You know, taking away that parental bond, kind of putting Nick in that in that awkward position where Kangaskhan is just there without parental bond, right? Right. It's just that Mawile took so much damage, and that foul play onto the Kyogre was the biggest uh, target, right? He was expecting maybe Kyogre to switch out, and uh, he was able to fully capitalize off there. So we're going to see how both players adjust in this best of three. That was a phenomenal game one, uh, one where momentum really shifted from one player to another. But we're going to get into the second game. It's really going to come down to whether or not Evan can, uh, you know, just relax take this next game as just another game, right? You yep. don't let the first game affect you at all. Yeah, but it's definitely scary, right? Because you had everything going your way. Uh, the, the trickiest thing in this matchup is knocking out that Groudon because Groudon is such a big threat against Mawile. And we see that Evan actually opts to bring Mawile again. So not bringing Salamence, and you are often tempted to bring the Mawile because it does help out immensely against the Evil Tall. But in the last game, we actually didn't see Mawile do very much. It was an offensive fresh. Uh, off they got off one play rough into the Groudon. Yeah, and that yeah. was it. And, you know, should be doing a little bit more. So uh, we're going to see the Groudons come out here once again. Yeah, we do see Groudon come out. It's going to be Groudon and Mawile out for Evan's side. A huge Intimidate right there to intimidate a Groudon and a uh, Evil Tall. Mm -hmm. uh, gonna weaken the Sucker Punch output, gonna weaken the knockoff output. Uh, Groudon, if it's special, I don't think we really got to see it attack, right? Yeah, but I actually want to talk about one interesting thing we just saw. The uh, Groudon on Nicholas end uh, got the Primal off before right. the Groudon on Evan's end, so speed that was tie. a speed tie. That was yeah. a speed tie. So these Groudons are most likely max speed indicated by Nicholas's HP, since uh, both your Groudons typically have higher HPs. Right. And so, uh, yeah, that's that makes this matchup even more scary. Uh, you'd imagine, you know, if you can win but a speed the thing, tie. the thing, well, I guess the players now realize that, but, you know, Coming into ga this game, Nicholas was unsure of, of his Groudon speed. And now right? he knows. Now he knows. And he was able to take tie. that even though he lost mm -hmm. the speed tie. So this is really good information for Nicholas. And I'm not sure if this is the best lead for Evan here. You do get the Intimidate, which is huge. But at the same time, uh, you know, your Mawile is still knocked out by any of Groudon's attacks. And Evil Tall is obviously a major threat. Uh, but it looks like he's actually going to stay in with both Pokemon. Mawile not going to protect itself here. Going to not even Mega Evolve. Going to try to save that Intimidate to see if he needs it for later. Oh. As the Evil Tall here, going to go for a. Foul play onto the Groudon, bringing it down to about 25% uh, of its health left as uh, the opposing Groudon now going to go for a press of It's going to connect onto Nicholas's Groudon, going to do a good amount of damage, going to not be able to pick up the KO, just 17 hit points left. As Groudon oh. goes for an eruption, 
that's not going to be that good. That's not going to be that effective against the Groudon. It is in the sun, but with such low health, no damage is done to that Groudon. Yeah, these speed ties are a big deal. Uh, if he had won that speed tie, I think he would have been in a phenomenal position to just take this game. I, uh, you know, obviously opted not to go for the press of his blades there because he didn't want to risk any misses. But uh, that's a big deal here because now Mawile actually can just knock out your Groudon with Sucker Punch. Even if it doesn't knock it out here, it can for the remainder of the match. Uh, the evil tall foul play into Groudon was a great play, but I thought it was relatively safe for Nicholas to just uh, foul play and press his blades because he also covered the Kyoto switch in so uh, Nicholas you know trying to maybe hoping he'd win the speed time maybe Groudon would protect but I think he should play the odds there and go for a press of his blades in order to uh, you know just do as much damage as possible because you know there's no Salamence in the back maybe Cresselia but uh, maybe he was trying to catch a Cresselia switch in but now it's that's, uh, that's exactly why Evan probably protected with that Mawile well. now Evan's probably thinking man I should have gone the offensive right there with that Mawile well. instead of just <laughs> killing a bit safe no I actually think the protect on Mawile well is good because you prevent any damage you don't know if you're gonna lose the speed time now you can sucker punch right. safely Right. right, but yep. now after seeing how that turn played out, right. he's probably like, yeah, I yeah, wish yeah. I could do that. We <laughs> do see Mawile, well. yeah. <laughs> hindsight is 2020, right? Yeah. Uh, we do see Evans Mawile now going to connect with the Sucker Punch onto Nicholas's Groudon, going to be able to pick up the KO. As Evil Tall now going to go for another foul play, going to pick up the Groudon KO on Evans' side. So now both Groudons are off the field again. Weather is going to be clearly in favor of Evan. Yeah, I mean, once again, I feel like. You know, this is what happened uh, in the first game, or yeah, in the first game, where Evan was able to knock out the Groudon successfully, and Mawile was still a bit of hang around. So, uh, once again, you know, I don't know how much Nicholas really has to deal in terms of damage. I mean, we saw, right? If you can consistently get the fake out and the foul plays off, that's a big deal. But a uh, Kyogre coming in is a big deal here as well, because both Kyogre and Mawile have a lot of offensive presence, and now Rain will be up for the remainder of the game, unless uh, we see a Groudon. Or actually, Groudon was Groudon's knocked out. were knocked out, yeah. Right. We do see Jump Love come in and Kyogre come in. Uh, for Nick and Evan, respectively. You know, Jump Bluff is going to outspeed everything right now. Right. It's the, not operating in its desired weather, <laughs> but, but it's still outspeeding everything. Right, I mean, and that's fine, right? Uh, but the, the same thing is Jump Bluff is a Pokemon that typically doesn't have much offensive, so we might see a Sleep Powder here, and those are inaccurate, too, and we do see one. We do see, see a Sleep Powder onto the Mawile right here as Evil Tall protects itself. Uh, Nicholas right now going to try to target down each Pokemon and put them both to sleep. Kyogre now going to go for an Ice Beam here, going to target down the Jump Bluff. That's a four, four times super, effective, super effective, effective attack. No Focus Ash. Jump Bluff gets knocked out, but it did some work. It didn't put the Pokemon to sleep. Yeah, but I mean, this is going really well for Evan. You already also burn a free turn of sleep there with Mawile, and uh, he made the really smart play of not targeting or going for a Water Spout. We just saw the Ice Beam knocked out Jump Bluff, and that's a support Pokemon down. Kangaskhan here could still pull something off if it has Power Up Punch, because if you do have Power Up Punch, then uh, uh, actually, we saw low kick revealed already, so that you know it, it can't do too much here in terms of uh, picking up or putting on more pressure. It, it could, of course, still threaten immensely with damage. So, for example, if you're Nicholas, you might want to hope that Mawile just stays asleep for a long time. You could potentially uh, knock out Kyogre here with a double edge and a foul play. Uh, but once Mawile wakes up, I mean, your King is gonna your Evil Tall. It's a uh, one hit KO onto the Evil Tall. And, like and 80%. Evan, still, Evan still has one more Pokemon in the back. We do see Kyogre protect itself here. Not gonna want to take a fake out, possibly, or even a double edge or any attack that this Evil is gonna throw at it. Evil Tall now going to go for the foul plate into the Kyogre's Protect as Kangaskhan goes for a low kick, going to target down that Mawile now. Mawile doesn't weigh that much, not going to do that much damage <laughs> at all. Yep, definitely there. And I think if I Nicholas there, I, I, I want to see Nicholas commit a little bit more, right? If you're predicting the Kyogre protect, double up onto the Mawile. And if you're expecting Mawile to wake up, maybe double up on the Kyogre. But instead, he gets minimal j chip damage off there. And now Mawile's taking another turn of sleep. So uh, the odds are just going more and more in Evan's favor. And Mawile could wake up this next turn, but it also could take a third turn of sleep. So I think if you're Nicholas, you might be hoping for that. And we do see Kangaskhan now go for a double into the Mawile. Going to bring it down 50% off the first hit, bringing it down about 40% off the second hit now. Uh, what is Evil Tall going to do? Is it going to go ahead and target down that Mawile? We do see the foul play. Most likely going to target down this... Ooh, target down the Kyogre. <laughs> going to still do a good amount of damage, about 60% right there. Wow. And now we have to see if Mawile is going to wake up. Kyogre goes for the Scald here. Going to go ahead and hit that Kangaskhan. Does pick up the KO right there. Huge, huge knockout. And now it's going to be Evil Tall versus Mawile. Kangas or Kyogre and... Oh, Mawile wakes up. up. Yeah. Uh, connects with the play rough too. That should be it. Uh, the huge knockout from that huge power ball. Yeah, I think there was little that Nicholas could do there if the Mawile wakes up. But once again, I really would have liked to see him commit a little bit more at the end, right? I don't think it makes much sense to target one Pokemon and then use your other Pokemon to target the other Pokemon. I think if, in that position, you want to pick up a knockout and uh, just hope that the other one doesn't pick up a knockout. And we did see Evan adjust really well. He lost that first game because he went for the Water Spout. He took way too much damage. And this time he realized, okay, I can survive the Sucker Punch combinations. And a Scald boosted by the Rain single target, uh, you know, should be able to pick up a knockout as we did see it on the Kangaskhan. So that was really well adjusted 
busted by Evan. But once again, it came down to that grout on speed high. If uh, we see a lot of eruption come out on Nicholas's end before the precipice blades, I mean that changes things up. And uh, Nicholas opting not to precipice blades that first turn meant like grout on and mobile, you know, were able to hang on longer. I think right now what Nicholas really needs to do is, you know, he has to protect his grout on a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? Like I feel like in both games his grout on was just knocked out really, really fast. Right. Right. So that's definitely one thing that I think Nicholas has to do. Evan adjusts really well in the second game. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like, the jump fluff is nice. Like, it does apply a lot of, like, support pressure. But at the same time, it's only gotten off one sleep powder, pretty much. Mm -hmm. right? But it did what it needed to, right? You got the free switch in, the free switch out. I think the biggest deal, if you're in Nicholas's end, is that you really need to conserve your Groudon a little bit better. Uh, you know that your Groudon speed high, so yeah, Pokemon does have the speed high risk, but knowing that knowledge, it allows you to make some better plays, right? Like, just try to knock it out before your Groudon comes in. Uh, because the, the way to beat Evan really is, you know, knock out that Mawile. That's the biggest threat. Once your Mawile's down, then your Evil Tail can rain free. And we saw how much damage it did with foul play. I mean, it was doing 70, 80% to Groudon and Kyogre, which I was surprised by. Right. And it, you know, was able to almost do a KO Mawile. So Evil Tail is the Pokemon that, you know, Evan or, uh, is the biggest threat. And, and Evan's obviously going to want to deal with that with this Mawile. But once again, uh, we do see the Groudon Mawile lead, but a uh, new Pokemon coming on the field this time. Thunder is now going to be playing the support role instead of a uh, possibly jump buff uh, or Evil Tail coming out right out the front. We do see Groudon go ahead and Mega uh, Primal Revert again. Uh, again, Nicholas's Groudon does Primal Revert first, and then we're going to go ahead and see Evan's Primal Revert. So again, a speed tie on that. That's not the speed tie you want to be winning. <laughs> yeah, but I actually really like uh, that Evan went with the same lead here. And the reason why I like that is because Thunderous typically cannot do very much against Groudon. Unless it has a really surprised tech, Hidden Power Water, or Grass Knot, but it's obviously not going to have Hidden Power Water Right, here. and then even then you think about it, Nicholas's team has nothing to allow him to use Hidden Power Water, <laughs> right? Exactly, so there's no reason for it to. Uh, so Thunderous is typically are either built bulkier offensively with Focus Sash or Citrus Berry, but they carry the only attacking moves are like Thunderbolt and maybe Hidden Power Ice and very occasionally Hidden Power Water. And the Intimidate here means that a Groudon here can't be knocked out on Evan's end. So Evan here could choose to target down the Groudon, maybe just go for a Precipice Blades Protect play like we saw in you know, Game 1. Uh, even if you lose the Speed Tide, that's fine. Uh, and on Nicholas's end here, you don't have that much offensive, offensive presence because you were uh, intimidated by the Groudon. The Thunders get Thunderbolt the Mawile slot, but you'd imagine Evan's going to want to protect or maybe switch out, but protect would make a lot of sense. I mean, one issue with Thunders is just that it has so many options as to what it can do. Not Again, you're right, not against Groudon, but uh, we do see Nicholas's Groudon protect itself here as is going to go for a protect too. This looks like it's a turn or some free damage right here for Evan. As Thunders goes for a hidden power, going to target down the Groudon here. going to be a hidden power ice, I believe, as uh, it does hit it in the sun, so it's not water. And we see a Precipice Blades into pretty much nothing because Thunders is flying. I really like what Nicholas did there. He adjusted from the game one where he just took too much damage with his Groudon. And this time, like, the reason why that's a big deal is because if you get that Precipice Blades off from Evan's end, then it's in Sucker Punch KO range. Now you really have to commit if you're Evan and double up onto that slot. That it hit a Power Ice actually did a little bit more damage than I expected. You'd I think that's actually a good call because it's going to, you know, some Groudons are trained to survive Earth Powers or Precipice Blades, right? <laughs> so that, that's definitely going to ensure the knockout. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, because of the Intimidate, you could have made the double uh, HP Ice Precipice Blades, but we actually see the Thunder switch out here into Evil Tall. Another flying type. Yep. <laughs> With the Dark Aura. Gonna boost some sucker punches here as Evan now gonna go ahead and switch out the Mawile too. Not gonna wanna stay and take a lot of damage. We do see Cresselia come in, so Nicholas right now in good position. Uh, the opposing ground does go for Precipice Blades here. Gonna connect on to Nicholas's Groudon. Gonna do a lot of damage. Should be able to hang on, does hang on. And now Groudon's gonna be able to move. Goes for an Earth Power. Nicholas's Groudon goes for the Earth Power onto Evan's Groudon. And that should be the KO right there as it does pick up the KO. So now Nicholas finally ends up on top of the ground on trade. Yeah, that's a big deal here. And, you know, one of the things we were talking about in this best of three set is can you conserve your Groudon? Who conserves that? And this time around, uh, Nicholas's Groudon is still around. We do get its moveset, though, and it's, a uh, you know, the mixed variant with Eruption, Earth Power, and Precipice Blades. Uh, and so, you know, that's really good. But, of course, Mawile now coming in once again can thread in with the Sucker Punch. The scary thing here is that, you know, you can maybe pick up a knockout on one of the two Pokemon with Mawile, but the other Pokemon can do a lot of damage, right? right? Uh, and the question is, you know, do you want to predict Groudon to protect and play rough Evil Tail, or do you want to just go for the safe Sucker Punch? But you'd imagine Cresselia here is going to try to set up a Trick Room because uh, can't get knocked out by a knockoff. Uh, so I think it's a relatively safe play for Evan here. Maybe just Sucker Punch Groudon and Trick Room. Uh, let the knockoff happen, but still get your Trick Room up and try to sweep from there, because once that happens, then, uh, you know, your Mawile is looking like a really big threat. As we do see Nicholas's Groudon now going to switch out. Uh, going to come in another Pokemon. Uh, what's it going to be? It's going to be the Thunderous here. Uh, okay, not that bad of a switch. Get that ground out of danger. Uh, Mawile now going to Mega Evolve. Not going to go ahead and see any point in keeping the uh, utility of Intimidate. 
And that was a really good intimidate because that ensures that Evil Tom will not be able to pick up the KO on that Cresselia for sure. Mm -hmm. Mawile now goes for a Sucker Punch, not going to be able to pick, pick to hit at all as Evil Talk goes for a knockoff onto the Cresselia slot, doing about 60% as the Mental Orb gets knocked off against more Life Orb recoil as Cresselia easily sets up the Trick Room. Yeah, I think if you're both players there, that's the ideal play, right? If you're Evan, you're expecting the Groudon to probably protect or switch out, but you'll still go for it because if you can eliminate it, that's a big deal. And now Evan is obviously in a little bit better of a position. He does threaten both Pokemon with the Mawile, but the scary thing here is, you know, do you predict the Sucker Punch onto Cresselia? Because if you do, then yeah, Thunder is most likely, you know, can carry a Focus Sash, as we see by the HP stack here. You know, that looks like it's going to be a Sash Thunder. So, uh, getting any damage off against Mawile is a big deal, and that's why Nicholas was able to win that first game. And Evil Tall now going to protect, not going to want to take a play rough right from that Mawile. Mawile does go for the play rough into the protect as Cresselia uses a skill swap here. Going to go ahead and target down that Thunder and take the Prankster away, and giving it a very useless levitate. <laughs> the most useless levitate we've ever seen. <laughs> And that, I, I agree with that move for sure, as Thunderous goes for a Thunderbolt onto the Mawile. You know, Thunderous' best thing about it, Prankster, yeah. but it's gone. Yeah, but, but, you know, Prankster's a big deal here, but you don't really need a Prankster on your Trick Room. You can Thunder Wave around, but I think Nicholas made the best play there. He prevented any damage going onto Evil Toll, and look how much the Thunderbolt did against Mawile. I mean, a Sucker Punch with a Thunderbolt will knock that out at that point. Sure, that skill swap was nice, but how much did you really gain from there? You just sold Thunderous' ability, but you haven't done any damage. Yeah. So, a phenomenal play there by Nicholas. I think he's been playing this really safely, but it's been working out perfectly. And eliminating Groudon with that Earth Power, which we hadn't seen until this final game, was a big deal. And Pokemon's really but game about information, right? It like, is. Uh, he hit that until he really needed it. And he protected his Groudon well, and he got the knockout instead. Yep, and you know, it's definitely not over. I think Groudon on Nicholas's end is definitely a little bit useless at this point. Uh, you can use it for switch fodder, uh, as we actually do see the Groudon switch in here. Uh, but the Evil Tall, as Nicholas correctly identifies, is the best Pokemon to protect right now, because once Trick Room expires, then you outspeed and just uh, outplay everything. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cresselia now going to go for a helping hand here. Uh, what is Monwell going to do? Uh, Mawile goes for a Sucker Punch here, gonna fail. Thunderous goes for a Thunderbolt, gonna target down that Mawile. It might be able to hang on, depending. Oh, gets the KO right there. Mawile gets knocked out. And yeah, it looks like everything's just going in Nicholas's favor right now. The Sucker Punches <laughs> are not connecting. I'm trying to figure out what really happened there, and I, I, mean, I, I do think I can, you know, offer an explanation. So the reason why we saw a Helping Hand Sucker Punch was that I think Evan was probably expecting a Sucker Punch from Evil Tall. So if you get that off, then the Evil Tall doesn't get to Sucker Punch your Mawile and it can maybe take a Thunderbolt. Right. But I'm not sure if I really agree with that play. But uh, Nicholas here, you know, you probably knew, okay, I most likely, it looks like he has Focus Ash on the Thunderous given that we haven't seen the other items. So you're going to have to double up onto my Thunderous. And it's highly unlikely you're going to go for an Icy Win because you know I have Sucker Punch. So uh, I think if Evan really wanted to capitalize off there, he should have Icy Win did and play Rough Thunderous, but that's obviously a little bit risky of a play. However, when you're as down as he is right now, you know, those are the big plays you have to make, and unfortunately he didn't make it. Uh, he went really hard on this one prediction. It didn't work out, even though it made some sense, and, and now he's staring down a 4-2 deficit. And, you know, right now, Nicholas has won the Weather War, right? He has, he has won the uh, the battle for Weather. Uh, we do see a Helping Hand from Cresselia go onto the Kyogre. Thunderous now going to protect itself, not going to want to take any damage. Kyogre now going to go for a huge attack, goes for a Water Spout, Predicting that Groudon switch, actually, and going to connect onto that Kangaskhan is going to be able to pick up the one-hit KO. So, yeah, Kangaskhan does get knocked out, but Groudon can just come back in. Yeah, here's the fun thing, though. You might remember that Cresselia actually got the skill swap and got pranks Oh, off, yeah, that's right. Uh, it actually could, you know, go for the skill swap, but given that Groudon's max speed, uh, you know, it's obviously going to be outspeeding Kyogre, but uh, this is actually still definitely not over yet. Uh, Groudon coming in here. But, you know, Evil Tall obviously can really thread in once Trick Room expires, and so I think it, this is going to be the turn it expires. Evil Tall can come and just knock out Crest, uh, but we might actually see the weather go back. Um, and now the question is, are we going to see an Icy Wind or a Skill Swap immediately? We do see Groudon Protect here, not going to want to take any damage. Priscilla <laughs> goes for the Skill Swap. Prankster Skill Swap! Wow! Uh, gonna go ahead and bring back the rain. Gonna give Cresselia, or sorry, give uh, Kyogre a uh, prankster now. Yep, right. Which it has prankster. Matter much. Doesn't matter too much. Priority protect, I guess. As the water spout does come out, gonna connect onto the thunders. Gonna activate the focus sash right there. Hangs on with a sliver of health because of that focus sash. And now thunders gonna go for a thunderbolt, targeting down that Cresselia right there, predicting a Kyogre protect, I believe. 
as the Twisted Dimensions do return to normal. Yeah, he's probably not even predicting the Protect, but you just want Cresselia to get knocked out, and this Thunderbolt's doing a lot from Thunderous. Uh, Cresselia is a Pokemon that typically doesn't carry Protect, so now you can just make the safe play of uh, Thunderbolting Kyogre, or Thunderbolting Cresselia and going for an Earth Power with Groudon. Uh, however, you know, this game could still come down to a critical hit, because uh, Evil Tom might not have enough firepower, although we did see Foul Play do so much right. game one. So, uh, even though, you know, the skill swap play there was a little bit cute, all Nicholas had to do was stall out Trick Room, so I still think it's his game to really lose here. He's got a pretty good position since he's got the speed advantage, and uh, he counted his Trick Room turns really, really well, and we see how clutch that Focus Sash on Thunderous is. Uh, being able to hang on with one HP, uh, and that, you know, Evan the entire time didn't uh, wasn't able to knock out that Focus Sash. We do see the Thunderbolt now connect with the Kyogre, gonna bring it down to about 50%. Uh, Groudon now goes for an Earth Power, gonna go ahead and target down the Cresselia, gonna pick up the KO there, and it looks like Evil Tall should be able to come in and clean it up. A good call right there, preventing an Icy Wind from coming out. Yep, definitely. I think there you definitely have to knock or out. Or Trick Room, or Trick Room, trick room. Yeah. yeah. Um, although we did see Icy Wind as well, so we that did, was we another did. combination. But uh, Water Spout here is going to be able to pick up the knockout, uh, but Evil Tall's Foul Player Sucker Punch should knock out Kyogre, so we should see Nicholas take this. But uh, I thought, you know, really well played, and... This, the thing is, like, I think Evan really had it to commit to spe specific plays, right? Like, if you're expecting the Groudon to protect there, I think you actually Icy Wind and Ice Beam to knock out Thunderous uh, before Trick Room expires. Uh, instead, that wasn't the case, and then, uh, you know, he, he just never really went all in on his attacks. And it's actually kind of funny, because that's what Nicholas, uh, like, uh, kind of his error in the second game. So, uh, now Evil Tall is able to just close things up. A Sucker Punch at this range should be able to knock out Kyogre. And that does pick up the KO on the Kyogre, and Nicholas LeCramp, that moves on to three and zero. Evan Bates falls to two and one. But you know what? That was such an amazing set. I want both these players to make it to day two, and I think they have what it takes. I mean, these are solid teams from both players, right? Yep, I believe Evan actually has made day two at U.S. Nationals before, but that was a really good set. Uh, not too much RNG, obviously some Groudon, you know, uh, shenanigans there with whether Precipice Blades is going to connect, but that's inherent with this format. Uh, however, that was really, really well played. I thought Nicholas adjusted really well.